Hey guys, welcome. I'm not in my car, I'm not on the bike, so neither is this a motor vlog nor is this a holiday vlog. In fact, I'm sitting in my office right now. I just wanted to share an experience I had yesterday. Um, a lot of people might have been through it, a lot of people might know about it, uh, but there might be few uh, like me who probably knew about it, but then they forgot or some people might not know about it at all. This is, uh, I, I just thought I would like to share uh, what happened with me so that um, people can be a little wary in future and nobody should go through it. So uh, before I begin my story, as we all know, we've, we are pretty much dependent on e-commerce these days. We got into the habit during COVID times. Uh, I've got a little lazy, so even essentials or big things or small things, I end up ordering online. In fact, sometimes I find uh, better deals on uh, online than uh, offline. Irrespective, this is just what I'm saying. By, why my story sort of depends on this as for my how my brain worked at that time when when it happened. So I get a call from FedEx. Now, when I say FedEx, I'm sure majority of you know what where this is leading. I'm sorry if you know the story, you guys can leave, or if you want to hear my experience, you can carry on. Those who don't know, please stay tuned and uh, and stick here, and you can hear me out. So I get a call. I'll, I'll keep it short because it's going to get too long otherwise. I get a call from FedEx, it's, it's, a, it's an automated call, I see the number of my mobile, the number looks uh, like a special number, I don't usually uh, take random calls, I in fact I'm one of the few in my house who professes that you know don't take unnecessary calls, don't take call center calls, they're typically all, they, the numbers look similar. This one looked a little different because it had a lot of multiple digits which were repeating. So I thought it's like a special number, could be something important. I take that call, it's a, it's a FedEx recording, and it says that there's a shipment that um, has been returned, and that shipment belongs to me. So it, then there's, it's automated, so it says press 1 for details, press 2 to speak to someone, I press 1, and uh, it takes my, it, the recording says my name, and this is... I, I, I dealt with FedEx, so I know what FedEx sounds like, I know what the recording sounds like, the dialect, the recording, the, the voice, it was so authentic. I, I, I couldn't even think that there was anything wrong with that call. Anyway, I, I, I press one, they give my name, they give my details, they tell me my Aadhaar number, and they say that this is it and there's a shipment. Now, so a lady comes online, introduces herself, gives me her employee number, Say there's a shipment which was, um, I apparently have sent from Mumbai to Iran, and that shipment comprised of a uh, certain amount of cloth, credit cards, passports, a uh, number of passports. These are not just one quantity, I'm talking about numbers, they by seven, ten. Um, and then the last item that she mentioned was 70, seven zero strips of LSD. A lot of people know what LSD is, those who don't know, LSD is an illegal substance, it's a drug. Uh, it's it's absolutely banned in our country. In fact, most of the countries around the world. So I was a little, I panicked a little. I again I thought that maybe this is a crank call. Maybe maybe you know someone's making a fool of me. I checked the number again, and the lady was talking to me, and uh, she her dialect, the way she spoke, her everything was so professional. I've I've dealt with these courier companies. I know how they sound, and she sounded really professional. Um, I, I said, what do I do now? So she said, don't worry, we've already um, raised a complaint with the cyber cell and we've uh, also um, uh, told the narcotics department and um, we've already filed a complaint but uh, because now we have you online and this is a clear case of uh, misuse of your identity. So uh, we would, uh, if you want, we can connect you to uh, the cyber crime department and the, um, uh, the narcotics department. I said, fair enough. Uh, I said, okay. Uh, again, I, I asked her. She said, please take my employee number. She's sounding very, very authentic. She connected me uh, and the recording came on, that same music. Everything was the same. Again, it was very convincing. Every time, I, every minute I went by on that call, I was more and more convinced that it was a genuine call. I get connected to the, uh, the cyber crime department and a gentleman comes online, introduces himself as an inspector. I think his name was Mrs. Savant. Uh, and then he tells me, uh, what, why have you called us and what is this for? I said, I've been connected uh, by FedEx. So he said, uh, is your name so-and-so? I said, yes. Your Aadhaar number is so-and-so? I said, correct. All the details mentioned on that, like I repeated. And uh, he said, then do you know that you've been uh, accused in, in a case and uh, there's a shipment which has illegal substances being returned and you shipped it? Again, all the details that that woman had already given me. And uh, he said, now, uh, it, it, did, did you do it? I said, you crazy? Not at all. 
And I told him I'm a lawyer and this and that. I live in Delhi. I have nothing to do with it. Why would I even send a shipment with those substances? Even if I had to, why, why those contents of the shipment? Anyway, so um, uh, I said, uh, absolutely it's false. So he said, okay, then um, I will also bring in the DCP. I think he said the DCP. Uh, of the Narcotics Bureau online and we will do an online investigation for 30, uh, it, it might take up to 30 minutes and this will be a recorded call so please uh, can you, do you have Skype? I said yes, he said can you switch to Skype? I opened Skype, they gave me a number, uh, uh, not a number actually, um, a contact, uh, how do you call it? Uh, it was an ID, it was a, a Skype ID. When I punched it in, I got the details, you know, on the screen it said Narcotics Department, whatever that full form and, and everything in Maharashtra and uh, Bombay and there was an address and there was a proper logo. So again, for, not for a split second did I think that this wasn't authentic, you know. I, 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 I was pleasantly fooled as you can say but I, I was pretty convinced it was a genuine call. They said okay now um, because they, this is going to be an investigation, please make sure you're in a room alone. Um, I said I'm alone. So I locked the door. I, like an idiot I went and I locked the door. And uh, they said okay now if we hear any third person or any other sound, the call will get cancelled. The investigation will be uh, uh, considered incomplete and uh, we, you'll be prosecuted uh, as per law. And um, if the investigation goes through and if you feel that everything is okay, then we'll give you a police clearance certificate and you're, you're scot-free, you're free to go. So um, I said, okay, fair enough. So I had my camera on and we started recording that call. And uh, in the chat on Skype, he says, now open your Skype chat. He sends me his uh, identification, which was, a, I presume, a genuine identification of a, of a cop, which was Mr. Savant in his picture and everything. It was a very genuine ID, colored, all colored. Uh, sent me a, uh, then they sent me a few documents which were printed on the Narcotics Bureau letterhead. Very genuine. I'm telling you, that it was colored. The font was absolutely correct. The dialect, the vocabulary, the language was spot on. I have dealt with... In my, in my 22 years of legal practice, I've dealt with cops, I've dealt with uh, legal officers. I have seen how cross-examinations are done. I have seen how uh, interrogations are done, prosecutions are done. I know the way they talk, these officers. It was spot on. Uh, not even for a split second did I think that there was anything wrong with that call. So I went ahead with whatever they said. They, they sent me those documents online. I kept reading them out. It had my name. My Aadhaar's were me my details were mentioned, my other details were mentioned, uh, everything was mentioned. It said that you had been, uh, you know, inf you've, you've been uh, charged with this, this, this. There were penal sections quoted from IPC, from CRPC, the works, absolutely authentic legal documents. And uh, at least that's what they seemed like. Then they said that, uh, they showed me, they said open your chat and look at these two pictures. Now th those two pictures had a gentleman who was, who seemed to be in custody of uh, the law enforcement. And uh, they said, do you recognize this gentleman? I said, no. They said the name is so-and-so. They gave some name, I don't remember. They said he's been arrested a few days ago in Mumbai for money, uh, in a money laundering matter. He's like a kingpin in money laundering. And uh, the, the amount of money laundering is about 1.8 billion US dollars, some, something like that. And he said, um, when we've investigated this person, uh, it's been found that he's used multiple IDs from uh, belonging to students, to officers, to all walks of life, from from, from young people to old people. And uh, a lot of them have given their IDs voluntarily in exchange for commission for him to commit his money laundering crime. And he said, my ID seems to be in the same, uh, my ID has been reflected. So now we've deviated from that shipment of FedEx, because we're not talking about shipment of FedEx. We're not talking about the fact that there were drugs found in that perpetrated shipment. Now we're talking about the fact that my ID has been misused, not just for that shipment, but now I am uh, a part of a money laundering racket uh, with, with a crime lord. Uh, so an international crime lord uh, who's been um, arrested. I said, now what? Now again, I, I, my brain's not working. So, you know, I'm getting more and more convinced that this could be genuine. So, and the guy's sounding really genuine. His, his conduct with, I, I can hear I can hear wireless walkie-talkies in the background. I can hear all the recordings. When I, in fact, when I was connected from FedEx to the department, the, the department recording sound was so authentic. They had that same music going on, hold on. Uh, you know, the typical that you don't hold, it's in Marathi, it's in, it's in Hindi, all that, it, very genuine. Uh, sound sounded very genuine. Uh, oh, it's sorry. The recording's like almost ten minutes now, so I'll try and wrap up. I don't want to bore you guys with the conclusion. I think most of you know how it concluded, but I have to finish this. So anyway, I said no. I'm not associated with this person in any way. Nothing. Uh, this is okay. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, then they send another letter. It read. I don't have any of those letters because I'll tell you what happened later. 
So I can't read out the contents. I don't remember them very well. So uh, it read out and it said that we will, um, you will have to transfer 98,887 rupees, 0.40 pesa to an RBI uh, nominated account and uh, once you make this transfer from your account, there are bots that work uh, through their investigating program and if they pick that amount, if they connect that amount, that, so this, this particular amount, this specific amount apparently was supposed to be 0.1% of the commission that all the people who helped that criminal with their IDs got as a commission. So I was supposed to be one of them, I was allegedly one of them who was supposed to have received that amount. So though I hadn't, and I told them I hadn't received any such amount, but anyway, uh, I said, oh, fair enough, uh, what do I need to do? They said, uh, do you have GPO or Paytm? I said, I have, yeah. So they said, open any of those apps. I opened them, they gave me an account number, I punched that account number in, and uh, when I punched the account number, they, there was an IFC code, typical how you transfer money, I put in the IFC code, and then that account name came as MK Enterprise, and the bank was, I think, Punjab National Bank, and um, branch was somewhere in Andheri, Mumbai. Now, I, I, again, now, oh, oh, by the way, all through this video call on Skype, they can see my video, but I can't see them. And not for one minute did I think that, why can't I see those guys? So anyway, now this is the time when the red flag that should have come right in the beginning, when that call came, now I got a red flag, and my brain starts working. I said, this can't be right. Why would RBI want me to transfer a certain fund into an account nominated by it, which is not even nothing to do with RBI? And, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it was, I, was, I felt like such a fool at that time. And I wanted to disconnect the call, but I wasn't sure. So I wanted to be really sure, and I didn't want to cheese off that guy by being, by being rude to him. So I thought I'll carry on and ask him. So I said, sir, you can see me, but I can't see you. Now you want me to make this transaction, but before I make that transaction, I would like to see you. So please, uh, I would like to see you in your uniform. Could you switch on your camera so that I can uh, have a look at you and you know I can authenticate that you're there and this is not a false call. At that time, that guy got agitated and there were uh, the other officer who'd connected me to him, he was also on the line and it was typically like a conference call. I could make out, but very authentic. So he got agitated. He's like, what do you mean? And, you know, his, his tone changed. And he said, are you trying to interrupt this investigation? You know, if uh, you try to hinder this investigation, you'll be accused and uh, they'll, you'll be prosecuted against uh, uh, as per law and all that. I said, well, I'm a lawyer. I know everything. I said, uh, see, uh, you know, we have uh, virtual court proceedings. We have a lot of other proceedings where you can see the judges, prosecutors, the whole world. So why are you shying away from putting on your camera? Then that's the uh, format. I said, no, I'm sorry. That can't be the format that I can't see. I said, then what, let me do one thing. I'll take a flight. This is, it's daytime. It's morning right now. Let me take a flight to Bombay. I'll come to your head office. You say that it's in Bombay. They told me it's in Bombay. I said, I'll come to your office in Bombay. I'll sit in front of you on your desk. I'll open my phone and I'll make that transaction in your office. He got really agitated. Okay, uh, and then he sh started shouting, Inspector Salman, open the file, uh, put this case, send his details to RBI, tell RBI to freeze all his accounts in 15 minutes, all his accounts. Blah, 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 blah. It was, I wanted to curse that guy at that time. I wanted to literally open the screen, go bloody punch his face, which I couldn't because that's when I realized this was all a hoax. I said, dude, you're a goner now. You've wasted so much time. You've got my voice. Everything, I don't know what you can do, you're my Aadhaar, I don't care. And they disconnect, within a few seconds, they disconnected the call. I was shocked, I opened my phone, I opened Skype. Suddenly I saw the chat, all the documents, everything that I'd sent from documents to pictures, vanished. I, the number that I, call, that I got a call from on my mobile phone, I called up, I tried calling up that number, it wouldn't even connect. I called up the, uh, the cyber uh, crime uh, department, um, the toll free number, Delhi. I spoke to the an inspector officer, answered the phone. I said, sir, I'm so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, I got a call, and this is regarding a call that I called from FedEx. So the guy was speaking to me in Hindi, so uh, the officer, so the officer said, aapko FedEx se phone hai, main ji, aur uh, aapke paas mein drugs the, aur wo aapis aage hai, main ji, aapne paise de diye, mein ka, nee ji, mein diye. Uh, then he said, oh, Singh sahab, aap to baj gaye. So <laughs> that, that was like authenticating the fact there was a total rubbish hoax call. So I said, sir, it's not authentic sound. I am a vakil. I am dealing with people with these people, officers, you know, I am telling you how the dialect and their demeanor is. And uh, it's not authentic that I... And by the way, the entire duration of the phone call and the Skype was about, uh, I think about an hour. So I said, it's about one hour and a half. And I didn't have any doubt about it until they told me that they transferred money and they gave me an account number. 
तब जाके जो मुझे शक शुरू में हो जाना चाहिए था और मेरा दिमाग इस बार बिल्कुल नहीं चला और दिस वॉज ऑल्सो दिन दी ऑफिस है दैट आप आप मानेंगे नहीं सिंह साहब दैट ए आई जनरेटेड ये सारी कॉल्स होती हैं वो आपके इमोशंस पे ये कॉल्स को और इन्हेंस करते हैं ए आई इज डिवेलपिंग दोज इट्स लाइक अ स्क्रिप्ट दोज गैस अ गेटिंग अ स्क्रिप्ट अगेन अगेन ही साइड वी डोंट इवन नो इफ देर इज अ फिजिकल पर्सन इन दी अदर लाइन इट कुड बी ऑल ए आई जनरेटेड द वॉइस दो आई कुन टेल एंड ही साइड सिंह साहब हो सकता है कल के दिन आपको आपके फादर साहब का फ़ोन आए उनकी आवाज़ में और वो आपसे कुछ मांगे और आप उन्हें आप कोई पैसे कहेंगे कोई इमरजेंसी है कुछ है पैसों की ज़रूरत है और आप उन्हें दे दें और पता लगे ए आई जनरेटर उनकी आवाज़ थी क्योंकि उन्होंने भी आपकी आवाज़ तो रिकॉर्ड की होगी आपने चिट्ठियाँ पढ़ी हैं उनके लिए सो आई सेट येस दैट इज़ ट्रू सो दैट सेट सो आई फेल द कम्प्लेन एंड आई फेल सो डिफीटेड आई नेवर फेल सो सो डिफीटेड इन माई लाइफ बट आई फेल सो डिफीटेड विद दैट and um i i just felt it, it was like a new fear a fear i never had and suddenly i had this fear in me that uh, this could happen to anybody it could happen to me again it could happen to my kids my family my parents anybody anybody around us all of you so um a hey, so uh, long story short guys be careful it's happening and then by the way i went on google i pulled out um, uh, articles and i saw and i then remembered that back in august 2023 I had read an article in the newspaper where uh, sev- about 200 or 250 complaints had been filed in Bangalore. Same, absolutely same. FedEx call, parcel return, drugs, this, that, illegal substances. I had read it, and I had completely forgotten when that call came. I could not even connect because those guys were able to convince me that it was a genuine call. So, guys, any shit can happen. Be careful. don't take these calls if you do i don't know be a good judge and um, you should know i should have known that i've never sent a parcel i should have just said i haven't sent any such parcel and just ended the call there or i shouldn't have just taken the call i should have just disconnected but i did so also uh, what i realized later was that like when he said when the officer said that aapko kabhi bhi call aa sakti hai ho sakta hai aapke father ho mother ho koi bhi family se ho kya emergency hai i need funds तो आप क्या करेंगे सो आई थिंक एवरीबडी विद योर क्लोज वंस यू शुड डेवलप सम कोड वर्ड्स दैट इफ एवर सच सिचुएशन एक्चुअली हैपेंस एंड यू वॉन्ट बी शोर इफ इट्स अ क्रैंक कॉल और अ फॉल्स कॉल और अ फ्रॉड कॉल और अ फिशिंग कॉल यूज कोड वर्ड्स यू नो एनी थिंग जस्ट टू ऑथेंटिकेट दैट द अदर पर्सन ऑन द अदर लाइन इज जनरली योर नियर इंड योर वन सो दैट्स इट गैज आई डोट वो यू दिस इज वॉट हैपन विद मी दे हैव माई डिटेल्स आई नो वॉट शिट दे कैन डू विद इट दे हैव माई वॉइस they can probably generate ai shit against my voice who knows but this is what's happened with me be careful be wary there's a lot of crime happening i guess uh, in big towns in main cities and stay vigilant and don't be dumb like me all right see you guys i'll catch you in the next one bye